Howdy, everybody. I hope you're all doing well and have survived the recent winter storms okay. Recently, in my private group, a couple of people, including myself, have mentioned the concept of Wu Wei. I've been in this Wu Wei zone, and it's been super clarifying, productive, and peaceful. So I wanted to share this with you because that's what I do. When I experience something awesome, useful, or stunning, I want to share it in hopes that you can benefit from it too. So today I'm going to talk about what is Wu Wei, share some benefits of doing it, and give you some examples of how to recognize it when you see it and how to do it to inspire you to give it a try. Each week, I bring you tips to help you release what isn't you, allow what is you to blossom and to understand human dynamics so that you can be the best person you can be. You're important. We need you to shine in the way that only you can. So if this podcast helps that to happen, please consider engaging in reciprocity by writing a review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts because it tells the search engine gods to prioritize the podcast so that people can find it. Another way to help is to drop me a comment. Let me know what is helpful. I'm here to help you. And if I know what you want, I'll give you more of that. So it could be like a podcast personalized just for you, which is just about the coolest thing I can imagine. I'm sure some of you have never heard of Wu Wei, so let me start by telling you what it is. Wu Wei is a Taoist idea that means doing without doing, causing, or making. Another way to think of it is effortless accomplishment or no going against the nature of things or going with the flow. You may notice that doing without doing is very balanced in the yin and the yang. It's a very wise mind way of being because it's not premeditated, but rather spontaneous. Our actions aren't plotted or planned, and yet they're effective and efficient. It's kind of a hard concept to grasp, so let me delve into what it's not. It's not simply being easygoing or lazy. There is an ease about it because it's effortless, but it also contains this idea of releasing what is non-essential. And if you're like most Westerners, we carry a lot of non-essential baggage that complicates our life. We've got money worries, self-esteem issues, weight, family, relationships, transportation, housing, social, and spiritual things that unnecessarily plague us when most of us are already doing okay. If you look at the squirrels and the deer, they aren't running around like a chicken with their head cut off. They aren't worrying or gossiping. And it's cold outside. We're not even to the halfway mark of winter yet, but they're chilling. That's what Wu Wei is really about. It's capturing the natural essence of who we are and going with that natural flow. It's trusting nature and following our own inner knowing of how to be natural. The animals are natural because they don't have emotional insecurities, big dreams, or the need to succeed they're already okay just how they are because they trust that they're a part of this big what is that holds all things together. Things move in natural cycles that come and go and they're a part of it. So why resist? When we're engaging in Wu Wei, we're expressing oneness. Animals aren't truly doing nothing. <laughs> they're eating, sleeping, mating, and gathering food. They're doing what's essential without any more effort or ego than what is required. They're riding the natural flow of nature that holds everything together to get things done rather than powering, controlling, or willing their way forward. And that's what Wu Wei is. One of the benefits of practicing Wu Wei is that it's a stress reliever. I've always been pretty chill, but when I started relaxing more, I realized how much more chill I could be. And I'm pretty excited to see what dip depths there are to explore. So if you're high strung or anxious, I think the difference between that and getting to the baseline of chill would probably be pretty dramatic. That would be worth trying for me. Another benefit is enhanced creativity. I wouldn't say that I'm a very creative person, but when I'm in the zone, it comes a lot easier and faster. It's as if these ideas are coming from the ether and are downloaded to me rather than me thinking about it. So it's effortless. It's like there's this big power that forms and holds things together and I'm able to access it. It's the coolest thing ever. Another thing that happens when I'm doing without doing is that I'm more efficient. I can get caught up in hurrying, multitasking, and not taking breaks like anyone else. 
and doing too much because I think that it's going to help me get everything done. But when I think about it objectively, it doesn't really work. It feels better to be working harder, though, because that's what people tell you to do, right? Well, it's not efficient. And I'm not sure when I switch things off, but I've been in this zone of not hurrying or stressing and everything is getting done with more precision than before. I can breathe. I don't feel rushed. The days feel leisurely and open like anything could happen. That's a much better feeling than approaching things like not wanting anything else to happen because it would be a demand for my time that I just couldn't handle. You know what I mean? I'm sure you've been there. Just ready to hide in a closet to keep anybody from asking you to do one more thing. Well, it's not been that way at all. My um, patience is is strong. I'm available, open, and willing for whatever happens. And that feels amazing. Which brings me to another benefit. That's your health. I don't have any objective data on this, but if you're uh, easygoing and open and chill, that's got to have a huge benefit on blood pressure cholesterol, cortisol levels, and all the medical epidemics that Americans suffer with. Being in a space of contentment does wonders for the physical health. Another benefit is surprise. I've been a planner my whole life. I have agendas. I know what I want to do and make plans to make sure that I get things done. That can be super effective if you're goal-oriented. I go from A to B in the most direct route, but lately that's not been me. I've been open to what the wind blows in And that has led to pleasant surprises. It's not been anything big yet, but it doesn't have to be. For example, I might think that the day is going to be like any other days, but I end up having an unplanned shopping adventure with an old friend. Or maybe a chance conversation with a stranger at a grocery store leads me to a class that I absolutely fall in love with. Or something pops up while I'm browsing the internet and that leads to an incredible job. The problem with having everything mapped out is the doors closed to everything else. I don't regret any of the things I've done, but I wonder where nature would have led me had I simply followed her lead all along. And that leads me to the biggest payoff of Wu Wei, and that's authenticity. When we practice Wu Wei, it's not something that we do or don't do. It's more like a dance with the rhythm of life. I think the expression go with the flow captures it very well because there is you who's riding the wave and then there's the wave. You're not the wave, and yet you can't go anywhere without it. So it's an engagement with the essence of life. It's not a solo activity. When you have power and you can do something, you do. And when you don't, you let go and trust. It's really that simple. Let me see if I can break that down into things that you can grasp. So first, we have to be aware. If we practice non-judgmental observing, we can see things as they are in this moment. It's not what happened yesterday. It's not what I predict might happen tomorrow. It's what's happening today. All time is now. And if I'm not here, I can't impact this moment. So I have to be here now. Being here sounds like a very simple thing to do. But if you really look at it, I think you will find that most of the time you're either thinking about something that has already happened or something that hasn't happened. I'm talking about things like, oh, my God, the last time I saw her, she took up so much of my time and would not shut up. I don't have time for this right now. That's thinking about the past, not now. Or maybe it's more like, my boss is going to kill me if I don't get this paperwork done. I have got to stay up tonight no matter how long it takes. Now you're projecting into the future. If you got grounded in either of those situations and became present to this moment, things would look really different. Your heart rate would probably be slower because there's no danger right in this minute. Your ability to respond from your heart would probably be more accessible and lead to a different outcome. In the first instance, maybe your open-heartedness would help you to create a boundary so that you prioritize your needs over those of someone else's. Or maybe you relate to the person in a different way, and that's pleasant for both of you. Or maybe you're right about her wanting a lot of time, and you give it to her and enjoy it. That's what I'm talking about when I mention surprises. We really lets us be surprised by life. We're open to it. So they come and we say yes or no. In the second situation with the paperwork, maybe you decide to finish up the paperwork, but you do it in such a mindful, present way that it flows effortlessly and takes half the time. In fact, it's your best work ever. When you get into bed, you're not wound up and can fall right asleep. Wouldn't that be an amazing shift? 
That's what it's like to practice Wu Wei. Now, I said the first step is to observe non judgmentally. The non judgmental part is really important because that's what keeps your mind from spinning up, jumping to conclusions, and getting your emotions involved. If things are the way they are, it's easier to be in a place of Wu Wei with them. When I was a kid, I lived in the Midwest and we got snow. I never saw the forecast and thought, oh no, it's going to snow. That means going to school will be cold and wet. I'll have to bundle up, yada, yada, yada. It was just, it's going to snow. Or even, yay, it's going to snow. There was nothing negative about it and no stories to go along with it, even though it had snowed plenty of times before. This meant that a snow day could be anything. When we get older and experience hardships and disappointments, we begin to see life through that lens. And Wu Wei takes all that away and brings you back into a childlike, magical place where everything is new and possible. And that feels wonderful. If you're safe and you've got skills to deal with things, and if you don't, I'd start there before you try Wu Wei, or it might be overwhelming. Another piece of Wu Wei is releasing control. It's reflexive to tighten when you feel threatened. If you're on a roller coaster, you grip the safety bars tightly. If someone's yelling at you, you tense up your muscles. Your body is bracing for impact and your mind is trying to stay in control. Trying to go against what your brain and body's instinct might feel like a battle, but if you've done any somatic work, tai chi, qigong, probably yoga or meditation, you've already done that to some degree. It's kind of like a mind over matter thing. It takes practice to stay calm when your body is saying, let's get out of here. But Why are we trying to override that alarm? It's because heightened stress and anxiety distort the picture and can cause us to overreact, underreact, or not act. When we're cool and objective, we can woo way, do without doing, and exert only the control that the situation needs. Or if we're in a situation where we have no control, we can surrender. In my personal experience and what I see in my clients, surrendering control is way harder than calming down. It's like we think that we have to do something, we must change things, or we have to at least make an effort, and we don't. If it's not the wise thing or even possible, we don't. And doesn't that make you feel humble and small? I think that's part of Wu Wei too. I often hear people talking about going bigger, but rarely do I hear people embracing what is small. Compared to that big energy that holds it all together, humans are very small. I think most of us think of humans as the creatures that have dominion over everything else. We're at the top of the food chain, but we're smaller than the stars, the ocean, the earth, whales, mountains, lots of things. A little humility is in order. When we know our place, we're less likely to dominate and control things that are bigger or smaller than we are. Going with the flow is a recognition of our place in things. But it's not all about humbling yourself. The flow supports us with direction and insight. I can't tell you how many times I've awakened in the last month just knowing the answers to things. I have so much inspiration. So many people and things have been put in my path that I could not have sought out had I tried to reach through with my mind. All I did was get the clutter out of the way so that I could hear my intuition speak. So let's see, what have I said? To practice Wu Wei, you have to observe non-judgmentally and release control. The next thing is to respond appropriately. By appropriately, I mean at the right time in the right way. Sometimes that means we don't act. Sometimes that means we wait. It could mean that we dial up or down the intensity. So how many times have you gotten a text that felt inflammatory and you were inspired to fire back in a, with a heated reply, but you waited? What happened during the time that you waited? When you're calm, you may reread it and see that it didn't say what you thought it said. (laughs) Sometimes you look at it later and are like, "Uh, whatever. Or you see it as something humorous. Or maybe you shut the whole thing down. If you act from emotion, you could perpetuate a cycle that has played out over and over again. If you act from your heart in a space of wu wu wei, who knows? You could break the cycle. I think that at least you'd create some peace for yourself because you are different. Another piece of Wu-Wei is letting go of the scorecard, goals, or results. It's not about any of that. It's about this moment. The next moment is about that moment. So there's no scorecard. 
As long as it's about the scorecard, you cheat yourself of this moment and this experience. Think about lust. What's that about? It's about craving new partners, new experiences, and firsts. The brain loves novelty. It wants to be stimulated so an old partner becomes boring because it's known and common. Practicing Wu Wei gives you a chance to fall in love all over again every day, not just with a human partner, but with all of creation. When we're practicing Wu Wei, it doesn't matter if you get the girl or not. The process of talking to her, getting her number, not getting her number, dancing with her, or whatever you do is enough. You're not fixated on there being some sort of outcome. I see so many people who get in knots over dating because they just don't want one date. They find the love of their life and stop dating all before they ever met the person in person. And that's not living, guys. Life's not about who has the most toys, money, and the biggest house, the biggest paying job, the cutest wife, or the most intelligent kids. It's about having an authentic experience while dancing with life. You can't do that if you're keeping score because the game will never end. It's like gambling. You can't stop while you're ahead or behind. So let this moment be enough. If you're playing golf, play golf. Don't let it be about how good you are getting the best score. If you're making love, make love. Don't let it be about the orgasm. If you're living with the wheel of life, you're practicing Wu Wei. When the sun rises, you're up. When it goes down, you sleep. It's the balance of yin and yang, rest and activity. You plant seeds, you harvest. You inhale, you exhale. Everything has a time and a rhythm. We are nature and she's showing us what to do. You just have to turn off your brain and let your intuition guide you. It's going to take a while of practice, but eventually you will find the flow easily. You've probably already felt it at some point in your life. If you do something where you lose track of time, that's it. Everything's just easy and it happens as if happening by itself. Usually it happens when we're relaxed, unselfconscious, and you're doing something either hypnotic like running or meditative like yoga. Practice finding and staying in that place for longer and longer periods of time. You might be able to get there by remembering when you were last there or doing that thing that got you there before. Meditation and stillness helps, but aren't 100% necessary especially once you get in the groove of feeling it. Since I've been hosting Meditation Mondays on YouTube live stream at 1 p.m. Eastern, um, it's just been increasing my sense of wu-wei. And it's the easiest meditation that you will ever do and can cultivate that stillness and zone I'm talking about. So if you want to join me, go to the YouTube channel and see if that's still happening on Mondays and join me. For me, wu-wei is when I feel the most myself. I'm not trying or striving. I'm just being. I'm engaging with the flow. We're dancing a dance that is sometimes romantic and sweet, and sometimes it's a little scary, but I'm connected to something bigger, and it's the expression of holistic living. I am physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. It is me, not a thought or something out there. I'm all of that, and it is me. And that's such a different experience from living from the ego or living from reactions. Most of us somehow got this idea that our mothers are supposed to love us unconditionally. Then we fall in love with the person who does that. Those are our true, true loves. But in reality, few of us have that. It's my experience that Wu Wei gives us the experience of unconditional love. We can feel it, be it, and give it from that space. It's an experience that everything is all right just as it is. Everything is peace and love. I know that's a hard thing to wrap your head around when we can objectively see crime, injustice, and perversion everywhere. But our reality is more than the physical world. Practice Wu Wei, and it'll give you a glimpse of the moreness that you are. The best way to experience is not to try, just allow. I believe that Wu Wei is the experience of allowing your physical self to link up with your non-physical self so that you have more power, awareness, and presence. It expands you to be more of who and what you are so you're not limited to your physical senses. It's like a superpower that everyone has access to, but few use. So is it any wonder that things are easier, more peaceful, and more effective when you use it? I took old style martial arts, which is where you use energy to make things happen rather than using muscle. It's exactly that. If you've ever seen a video of Bruce Lee's One Inch Punch, 
where his fist is one inch away from somebody's body and he hits them so hard that they fly back. That's energy. That's not physical. You know, that's, that's not his fist. So Wu Wei is the same, but we're not trying to punch anyone. <laughs> we're just tapping into universal energy to guide us rather than using our own. If you've experienced Wu Wei and have a tip, please share it in the comments. There's lots of ways to be there and every strategy doesn't work for everyone. So be generous and share your wisdom. I'd love to hear from you if you have a story, how it's impacted your life. I'm just curious and I want to know. It's been absolutely amazing for me. So thanks for tuning in this week, guys. Peace and love. Ciao.